Okay folks, this is um, take 72 on a really balmy March afternoon. Now uh, this is Carl and Ray. I'm going to tell you a bit about what we do and why we do it. I do it because I love the passion of the old world. I think it's better than the new world. I'm not sure what Carl's reason is. It's pretty much the same to be honest. Really? Oh yeah, the wonder of how they used to live, the feels that you get. You know, when you go visiting these places, it's and, just brilliant. And when they actually lived, you know, we'd come home to all the refinements of life. They didn't have any of that, did they? No, it's hard work. You can, yeah. you can imagine when you're there, you know, the tracks, the, you know, how far it was to go and get your yeah, water. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and everything had to be carried, you know. There was no such thing as Tesco's delivery. Yeah. And... Um, the thing they always wanted, I suppose, would have been something to build, which would be stone, water to drink, and yeah. shelter. And uh, when we visit these ruins, that's always what we found, isn't it? Yeah, but they also made use of the surroundings, like the trees. What's that tree called that they throw the <laughs> cloth on the to hawthorn. dry them? The hawthorn tree. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. I yeah. always look for those as well. Yeah, and yeah. Find, you find now that the, um, they've got bigger than they were because they're not being trimmed. The other mm -hmm. thing that was always there was a mountain ash that was there to ward off evil spirits. Right. Or the ravener, whatever you want to call it. You'll find that as around as well. Anyway, to cut this little thing a little bit shorter, we're together because the safety in numbers. I've been doing it for myself for a year, and the amount of times I've fell over and mm -hmm. places where you actually shouldn't be falling over, and it does have its danger. Oh, I'd say the amount of times I've got lost really, so you're falling over and I get lost. <laughs> I've been lost in the hills loads looking for things. <laughs> so I won't get lost and you don't fall over, so good bit of combination <laughs> Carla, good bit of combination. So the first video we're going to do will be um, Sleuth again and that should be out shortly. And uh, we did that a few days ago, it was a bit cold and windy but pleasant enough. And then we're going to head off and do a couple in Salty Will. And then one at Ramsey, and uh, we'll get back and let you know which other ones we're going to do. So I think we'll let the day go, Carla. Exciting times. Yeah, they would have used that for the stone. That's You'll find some holes in the ground all over the place where they quieted it out. I don't know whether they used the slates for selling or just to build the, the place with.
the year of this one? Well, I think this was probably around about 1864. That was when it was initially launched. And uh, it was originally owned by a guy called Morrison. And he had a fella called Tetley as his manager. And it ran for about five years before it actually um, stopped being productive. And then right, they just wasn't getting any more. It wasn't, I don't know what happened, they had Welsh miners they brought in because the Welsh quarrying industry died at the same time so most of these were Welsh lads right. and uh, they did the um, quarry because they knew what they were doing. <laughs> A little shit. So what are, what are we calling that again? It's a weather vane, isn't it? A weather vane. Still standing though, isn't it? Mm. It is in very good nick actually. So we must have done that though for um, the aesthetics of it rather than just a function, isn't it? Mm. Let's go and find the powder room. Mm -hmm. Come on, girls and boys. Put music on this, Carla. Mm -hmm. The music is always by a band called Bactolic Valen. All right. And then, uh, well, a Manx band. Right. And um, the trouble is with YouTube, you put music on, and it's going copyright. They uh, don't let you play it. Mm. So I had to find a band that didn't have a problem. <laughs> and uh, they haven't been in formation for a while. And I spoke to them in the email. Can I use your music? Yeah. And then they started writing some new stuff okay. because of the video. Oh really? Yeah. Some of the ruins up in Felty Will, you'll find when you go in them, they built a little room inside the ruins. Yeah, yeah. And somebody said that's the same reason they used those for storing dynamite when they were building them. Right. Well, why would they have dynamite in them ones? Um, I don't know, it's supposed to when they were doing the quarrying update at that time. Here, you know. <laughs> we'll miss it.
maybe where they took some of the slate from, Carla. Sorry? That maybe where they took some of the slate from, this hole here. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, probably. Oh, wow. After a big rain, we'll have a nice waterfall down that way then. Oh, indeed. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Am I going the wrong way? No, you're fine. <laughs> it's never going to be easy, was it? When you go out, you tell people where you're going. Sorry? You tell people where you're going when you go out. No. Never? No. So, I make myself laugh sometimes because, you know, like you say, I found that, that uh, mine shaft down at Port Cornet. You know, there's all sorts of things you find and then you're a bit screwed then, aren't you? If something happens. Well you are. But I'm the same as you unfortunately. Yeah. So this was the powder room. What's the story about the guy, Belshaw, is it? <laughs> we were discussing about that, didn't we? Yeah, I forget his first name. Maybe James or Kevin, I don't know. There was a, there's a bell on the quarry down there which used to ring before the um, dynamited. No, Roxy. And um, he obviously didn't hear it because of an explosion and he got hit in the head. Seemed to recover. And died the next day with a bleed on the brain. Fifteen year old. Fifteen? Fifteen. What a way to end your life. Yeah. So as I said, this was the pie room. Quite a long way from the uh, main buildings because an explosion, you wouldn't want to be part of it. When I first came here I thought this was a toilet, but it's an awful long way to go for a to do your business. Mm. So there was no health and safety clauses back in them days. <laughs> Hallelujah! How how would they have known what distance from the tower to here to put it? Um, trial and error. Trial and error. And don't forget it is a, around a hill. So it's true, it yeah. wouldn't actually get directly blasted. No. And what they usually did the, the, on these things, they make like a weak roof. So right. if it did went up, it went up in the air rather than yeah. out. And then the door faces across the valley. It was, would have been the luxurious Taipei, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it just? It's a long way to get there, but oh, it's roomy. <laughs> you'd have it well in my case. You have it set up before you actually needed to go. Yeah. The thing I found in a few of these stalls, of you may have seen as well, they have two seats, right, and a toilet. I don't. Do you know what? I don't think I've ever seen an actual working one. If you know what I mean. Yeah, so there's they a did couple. Have two seats. And I just think to myself. Who'd be sitting with? Who would you take? Yeah. And would you go with anybody? You know, it's just, just things you don't, isn't it? But you quite often find one's a small seat and one's a big seat. So. Maybe the kid went with them. Don't know. Don't know. We'll go back to the main place, Carla, if you like, yeah. and then we'll um, put a commentary to it where we're sitting down in the shelter. Mm -hmm. oh, with a bit of knowledge. Very good. Thank you. 
in there. Oh, it's a bait here. I'm gonna throw you in the river. Like round there somewhere? Yeah, she walked up to you know where Brandywell is, you know that place? Oh yeah. Just just before Brandywell there's a little plantation on the left. Right. There's a road there that takes you back up into Kirk Michael. Oh, yeah. You go up that and down to the um reservoir. Oh, right. The one where I thought we were going. Yeah. Some trek, isn't it? Yeah. Put music on at home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always in silence. Whereas I used to be into music like all the time, but like silence and you know, most recently I've never had a clock in the kitchen and I have now and now I hear that tick. <laughs> and I love it. Um, yeah, that's one down at Glen Russian. Yeah. Where the chimney used to be. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Big but chimneys fell now. A bit now. further along though. But I'm sure it's... Oh, you mean the quarrymen's cottages? Yeah. 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 I did a video on that last year. Yeah. That's like down in, well, nearly Glen May, isn't it? They look like, actually, when you say it, they are a lot like this, you know? Yeah. There's about six or seven in a little row. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's where you seen my picture of those little two little thingies that I found in the wall, remember? And you oh, said, yeah. oh, I'll go for a walk there, and we never did. <laughs> no, we will. We'll have to do that, because I don't know what they are. It's like, storage or something, I don't know. Well, you'll take me to them, shall we? We'll talk about it. I'll get some vitamin D somewhere. It's amazing, that wind drop, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I can tell you a story. So we come back to the shack and I want to read a little bit about what we've just been looking at. The quarry was in existence for about 15 years in the 19th century, mostly worked by 20 Welsh quarrymen who came to the island when Welsh mining went into decline. Although sometimes named as Kirk Michael Quarry, its original name was Slough Fregain and Mr C. Tetley was the manager. It closed around 1874 because of the poor quality of the slate. The ruins are those of the blacksmith's shop, the stables, a pay office and accommodation for the men. The belfry at the end of the building deceptively gives it the appearance of an old church. In fact, the bell, which it once housed, was used to signal the beginning and the end of the work shifts, which ran day and night. There was a fatality in 1866 when Hugh Belshaw was struck on the head by a large stone from a blast, which caused a bleed on the brain. Apparently he did not hear the first bell warning of an explosion, so did not take the necessary cover. He was a young lad and described as a well-respected sober male. That'll do. <laughs> now you need to just close it off. That was our trip to where uh, Slew for again. Not bad at this no, Manx stuff. <laughs> Although it is early March, it was quite cold, but it seems a bit more warmer here now. <laughs> Shall we throw the ball? <laughs> <laughs> 